All right. Thanks, Kyle. I get to follow up right after lunch. Um, so as he said, this is about mutation testing. has a really cool name. What is it? I find this to be an interesting concept, so I wanted to just you know, bring this up and talk about what it is and why you might want to give it a try. Oh, there we go. Okay, so what is it? It's software that can be run during a pipeline or any sort of build phase to detect any false positives in your unit tests. Just like when you run your unit tests, you could then also run mutation tests to find out if you have any false positives. How does it do that? Your code itself is mutated, and then your unit tests are ran again uh, to find any passing tests. Basically, if your code's mutated the way you're going to do it here, none of your tests should actually pass. Mutations are things like it'll change if something's supposed to be greater than, it'll change it to less than. Uh, and I'll go over what a few of the other mutators are that it'll go through, but basically it goes through your code and changes around a whole bunch of stuff, conditionals and other things, and anything that still passes in your unit test is considered a failure or a mutant that lived on. So that's why it goes through the whole mutant theme. So this winds up really letting you know that your unit tests may not be verifying what you think it is. Maybe you had some lazy coders that needed to get through a coverage check and just had it hit all the lines of code but didn't actually verify anything. This makes sure, or is one way you can do it to where it actually verifies your stuff. So what are some mutators? Well, it'll do things like it'll change your increments where you did plus plus, it'll change that to minus minus. Uh, it will remove calls to void methods because then, hey, maybe you didn't verify anything that happened in that void method, for an example. It'll change your return values, so it'll change things to null, insert incremented, does some math stuff where it'll change around your pluses to minuses, multiplication to division. Again, it's going through fiddling with your code, then running the test against it. It'll negate conditionals, invert integers, minus, plus, things like that. There's a whole bunch more. These are just most of the time when you hook this up the first time. These are generally the defaults you get out of the box when you want to run it all. Uh, it'll also change boundary, like if you just have less than, it'll do less than equal, all that sort of fun stuff. So again, it's just going through your code and fiddling with it like crazy and making sure all your tests better fail. Uh, again, there's many more. These are pretty much the defaults. If you know, you can look up for your various language here in a minute, I'll go over what some of those different frameworks might be for the given language you might want to try this out on. So some considerations when you do this, it's gonna, this process takes a while because it's fiddling with a lot of code, so it's gonna make it take longer. Um, it, instrumentation of your code, doing it this way, it takes a lot longer than when you're instrumenting for coverage. So keep that in mind. You may consider doing this check maybe as a nightly thing or as a sonar plugin when you're like, maybe you report on certain things on a nightly or, or weekly or on a per release basis. You may consider running this as one of those checks and go through and checking the report later. Uh, you may need to exclude certain files or classes depending on how your code is structured. So it would be yet another thing you might have to maintain an exclusion list over time. So if you wanted to get this in, that may be one extra thing you have to do. Uh, also, if you use something that already does some byte weaving fiddling of your code already, like PowerMock in Java land, for example, it may not work because that's already done some byte weaving of your code once and then you're going to go do it again to go check this out, that it may or may not work. So what are some of the possibilities, depending on your given language, if you want to try this out? Uh, in Java, there's pit, and it's pittest.org. Spoiler alert, as I go through these, they'll all be up there if you want to get a picture of them all. Um, JavaScript, there's something called Striker. You can go check that out. Um, I gapped these slides, so I got like 15 seconds. I got to talk and be like, hey, how was lunch? Cool. Awesome. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one I got next. Might be Ruby. Ruby has something called Mutant. So, yeah, definitely go check that out. How's everybody doing? All right, yeah. I, I should have had more on here now that I'm realizing this format is, again, this is, this is interesting. I think I got Python next, mute pie. That's cool. Check that guy out. Again, this is cool. You can run this, see how long it takes. Man, we really, our unit tests are awesome. This also means you actually have unit tests. <laughs> so <laughs> then there's also Sonar plugins available, which is probably by far the easiest way to do it. Turn it on if you are already using Sonar. 
and throw it over there and see what you get out the other end. Again, a good way to know, hey, coverage checks are one thing, but you can fool those. This is one way you can do it. So I just want to point out this exists. Go check it out. Thank you.